Um, <laughs> all right, we are live, just like that. Um, my name is Tim Patterson, and uh, I am with uh, Trade Show Guy Exhibits. It's my company here in Salem, Oregon, and I've been blogging and doing stuff online for several years as Trade Show Guy. Uh, so thanks for joining us today for the uh, Trade Show Guy Exhibits webinar. We are discussing VR or virtual reality. Uh, becoming very popular, especially among my kids. They all want it. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it is yet, but they seem to know a lot about it. In fact, over the weekend, they were talking about, let's create a virtual reality room so we can walk around and stuff. And I'm going, okay, you're going to bump into stuff, right? Um, haven't figured that out yet. So anyway, thought we'd bring in an expert. Uh, Dave Beck of uh, Foundry45, I tracked him down a month or two ago, and we've communicated a handful of times. I thought, well, I'll bring Dave in, because he has some great information. I had a client inquire about using it at a, as a trade show booth, and I thought, well, that, that's kind of cool. So Dave, hello. Hey, Tim. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So Foundry45, uh, you guys are in Atlanta. Give me like the thumbnail sketch of what it is you do and, and a little bit about the company. Sure. Uh, again, hey, I'm Dave Beck. I'm with Foundry45. Uh, we're the business VR leaders. And one of the main areas we focus on is actually face-to-face -face events like trade shows, conferences, brand activations, and whatnot. So I think this should be a really good conversation today. Well, it'll be fun to, to hear all about this. And we have a kind of a list of things we're going to talk about. So, uh, you know, I started hearing about virtual reality, and I remember reading about the Oculus Rift here probably a year, maybe two years ago, about this, you know, teenager virtually that invented this thing, sold it to, I don't know if it was Google or Facebook or somebody for like hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. Maybe it was a billion dollars. I don't know. Money got, got thrown around. Palmer and that's really all I know. To, uh, <laughs> Facebook for $2 billion. <laughs> Facebook for $2 billion. So I was, I, okay, <laughs> this this kid stuff, right? But but obviously there's a lot of money in it. People are going for it. It's a big deal. What really is it? Okay, yeah. So um, I actually printed out the uh, Wikipedia definition of virtual reality. It says computer-generated simulation that can be interacted with in a seemingly real way. You know, so, so what does that mean? Um, I mean, basically it's a totally immersive experience where by putting on a virtual reality headset, you can appear to be in a completely different environment than the one that you're currently in. And so what can that do? Well, it can transport somebody across the room, you know, across the country or anywhere around the world. And we'll spend a lot more time talking about specific examples of that. Um, but I wanted to give everyone just kind of a real quick primer on the different options for virtual reality headsets, because that's kind of important for kind of just having a baseline here in general of, of what we're doing. So there's two main types of virtual reality kind of headsets. One is the mobile-based headsets, and the other one are PC-based headsets. We focus mainly on mobile-based headsets because they're really easy to actually implement in a trade show environment. So for, for your type of events, it's a great way to go. And there's two different types of mobile headsets for VR that both work the same way. Essentially, they combine a pair of goggles with a smartphone. And the smartphone is actually the processor and the screen that you're looking at. So I have a couple of examples here. We'll see how well they actually show up on the <laughs> yeah. webcam. Let's take a look. Um, so the first one here, this is a Samsung Gear VR. And it's a partnership between Samsung and Oculus, which, as we said a second ago, was actually bought by Facebook uh, a couple of years ago. And the way it works is, there's a few very specific, there's four or five Samsung phones that actually, again, serve as the processor for the experience and also the screen. This phone goes in this headset. So you actually put them together, poke the, uh, push it in there, and then when you put it on, you actually watch the experience on it like that. Very cool. <laughs> Pretty cool, eh? Yeah. So that's kind of the, that's the high-end mobile VR uh, opportunity. Um, there's also something that's really cool called Google Cardboard. And this was actually designed, you, you've heard of kind of the Google time thing where Google engineers have 20% of their time to just do yep. kind of crazy moonshot fun stuff. Um, this was designed by a Google engineer that said, hey, this is a great idea, but it only works for a couple of specific phones. What about me and my iPhone or my just general regular Android? How am I supposed to do it? So he came up with an idea of actually using what's called Google Cardboard. And it literally, if you can look closer here, it actually is cardboard. 
It's made out of cardboard. It's got some little bitty lenses in it. And when you open it up, you run an app on your phone and you put your phone in here. Like, just try to make sure you can see this. Put your phone in like that and put the top on. And then you can watch the experience in there like this. This is one we did for uh, a, an adult swim show. It's a little uh, meat wad. Uh, Google Cardboard, but they can be branded. Um, they're a great thing to give away, actually, at shows. This is one we did for ICSC, which is a big shopping center consortium. And uh, they're kind of, they're, they're relatively inexpensive, and you can give them away, and uh, you know you can have apps on your phone that they can download from iTunes or Google Play. So it's a pretty interesting uh, opportunity. I'm just curious, when you talk about the, putting a phone into a system or a, a viewer, uh, how does that differ from what Oculus Rift is? I understand that's a standalone sort of thing. Is that where you plug it into a, a computer or something like that? Is that so that's a different kind of headset? Yep. So that's the next one up, right? So we, we just talked about the mobile uh, options. There's also what's called PC-based. And that's if you've heard of the, big, the two big ones are Oculus Rift and uh, HTC Vive. These are what, what's called room scale virtual reality. And that's more of what your kid was talking about uh, when they said they wanted to be able to strap on the headset and walk all around and do stuff. Um, they're amazing experiences. They're also really good for trade shows. They're just a little bit more complicated to actually implement, and you know the associated cost with doing that um, goes up a great deal as well. But there's all sorts of really good examples for what you can do there too. The, the key is that in order to run them, you have to have a really powerful gaming computer, and it's tip, it's right now the, the way the technology works is there's a tether between the headset for that, it has a big cord coming off of it that has to go to a, a powerful computer. And so there's a little bit of a, it's a little harder to implement in space, but it's a cooler uh, kind of actual experience. It's more so, immersive. So it's kind of more of a high end, but more immersive experience. It just got more bells and whistles as to what's going on inside the uh, viewer versus the the ones that you just talked about, the Samsung and the Google the cardboard. Yeah, so with, because it's room scale, it means you can actually walk around in the space and you can walk around in the 3D experience that you're seeing. And then they also typically have uh, handheld wands, essentially, that you can do things in space with that. You can pick things up or uh, one of the really cool ones has it. You can actually uh, do a bow and arrow. It, it's amazing. Um, <laughs> the, the, probably the most popular one right now is called Tilt Brush. And it actually allows you to paint in 3D and you can walk all around it and see, get in the middle of it. it it's pretty amazing. Uh, that, that'd be definitely fun to find out more about. So when you talk about uh, uh, virtual reality in a trade show, there's got to be content that goes along with that. And I presume the content, you probably have a, uh, a couple of choices. And I would think the, the, the most important thing is to have content that relates to what you're doing in the show. Otherwise, it's just kind of a show and tell thing that, that doesn't really draw people in for the reason that you're there. So talk, walk me through how that uh, works with the people that do this at trade shows. So I guess there's there's kind of uh, strategically, I guess, there's, you know, what, what are you doing at the trade show, right? Um, and there's kind of two typical ways that it's actually used. Um, you know, at the most basic level, you're going to just get people excited and draw a crowd to your booth, right? People love it. It's interesting to see other people using it because when somebody has that headset on and they're all moving around and everyone goes, oh, what are they seeing? You know, what's, what's in there? I want to see that too. And, and so that's an awesome way to get people excited. But yeah, that, that's kind of the, the baseline. Um, one of the main reasons why people really are excited about using it is because at, at another level is that it's a great way to get people to actually listen to your message, right? So if they're immersed in what you're going to say or in what you're saying, you create an immersive story and, and yeah, there's all sorts of different content you can do with that. You can do 360 degree videos, 360 degree stills, uh, motion graphics, complete rendered environments um, or any combination. Um, you know, when somebody watches your brand story in that and they take the headset off, they spend the first five seconds going, oh my gosh, that was so cool. It was like I was actually there. Um, but then they spend the next five minutes talking to uh, you know, the salesperson there about what they actually saw and the feature benefits that were highlighted or the, or the value proposition that was, that was pointed out. And if you compare and contrast that to, uh, you know, let's say, a 2D video that's playing on the wall behind you over top of the swag bowl or a piece of collateral that someone hands out, um, 
the virtual experience is much more immersive. So people are so much more likely to actually hear what it is that you have to say. And I would guess that uh, there are so many different ways to approach content. Uh, we talked earlier, and, and, and some of the content is, is very specific and custom. There are other types of content which are really kind of off the shelf that you just kind of brand with logos. So tell me the difference on, on how that works and, and why someone would choose one or the other. Okay, yeah. So we kind of do different – a lot of it just depends on what someone's budget is. Um, you know, at a lower level – um, you can create a custom experience that actually has someone's brand on it, but essentially use you know, the equivalent of stock footage out there, right? So you can, you can use the, the footage of swimming underwater in scuba or flying over a glacier in Alaska and use that to tell the story that the person wants to get across. But essentially, you're, we're, we're taking the logo, we're putting their logo in there, we're doing a custom voiceover so that the message they want to get across is, is you know, out there. But instead of us physically going to a site and creating new content for them, we're using existing content. So that's kind of the easiest, um, you know, simplest and lowest cost experience. A level up from there is if we work with a partner to say, okay, you have you know, your goal is that you're going to this show, you have three main points that are your features benefits that you want to get across to the constituents there, and essentially we create a custom story around that. And it might be two minutes long um, where it starts out talking about the brand and the, at, at corporate headquarters, and then the user is transported to their factory in Shanghai and learns a little bit more about that. And then they see the products in use actually out in the field, uh, you know, in a wind farm on the, on the Texas-Mexico border, you know, wherever they need to go. And, and it's a story that, that kind of gets the whole point across. And then for that, yeah, we're creating new content. All that content is, is filmed at the uh, headquarters. It's filmed at the factory. It's filmed on site. Um, so that's another level of higher of experience. And, and it, it is a little bit more powerful because it's actually specific to that customer. And then kind of the highest level one is what we like to call choose your own adventure. So we're still going out and creating custom content for uh, our partners, but instead of kind of telling a linear story where it goes from the headquarters to the factory to in the field, instead we set it up so that the user gets to kind of choose their own path. So they have a decision tree at the start that says, hey, this is our exciting uh, VR experience. And then they can go in and look around. And if it's a products company, we can highlight you know, three products in the factory by putting a glowing outline around them. And if the user looks at it, they can be taken directly to that piece of equipment and shown. We could use a 2D video that's existing content someone has and put it in there to tell a quick story about that. We could put pop-ups around it to talk about the various features and benefits. Or we could actually take them, when they look at it, we could take them to the factory where that piece of equipment was in fact being built, or we could take them to the field where it's in use, you know, the options are limitless. And then when, the, when that brief experience is over, they get popped back to that main scene and the voiceover says, hey, now that you've seen A, check out B and C or you know, look at the door behind you and exit the experience. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I'm guessing that, that when you're filming on site somewhere, you, you, you've, got, you, you've got to film with some sort of special gear, maybe several cameras all at once. I'm not sure how that is. I don't need to, to the full-blown uh, description of that, but, but certainly there's, there's some sort of you can't just go out with an iPhone or with a even a 35 millimeter DSL and shoot that. You've got to have the equipment, and that's where the specialty comes in. I'm guessing. Yeah, there's all sorts of different options for filming these days, um, but one of the most popular ones is actually a ball of cameras. Um, it's maybe the size large softball kind of size, um, and they're all packed in in all sorts of different directions. We like the one that has seven cameras in it, all in different directions. And basically, you go out and you film in 360 degrees, and it's getting everything. So it's an interesting kind of production process in that you can't rig it up and have lighting everywhere behind the scenes, you know, because everything's in scene. The post-production is actually more complicated oftentimes than the production because once you have all those, once you've taken that footage, you have to go out and take the data from each one of those cameras and stitch it all together so that it's all one big scene. And that can be a time you have to try and get, make sure you can get rid of all of the stitch lines and make the coloring correct and do shape. There's all sorts of sweetening to be done on the back end. 
And uh, so, yeah, that, that, that's kind of where some of the expertise comes in. So I'm guessing that a lot of the cost of this is just the labor of these really highly skilled people that know how to do all this. And you need time. So let's say uh, someone came to you and said, hey, this is a really cool idea. I got a couple of questions. How long is this going to take? It's going to cost a lot. So how do I justify the expense of doing this? <laughs> what can you tell me that actually shows there's a good ROI on this? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question because that's what everybody wants to know, right? Why, why should I do this? Um, and there's, there's several good reasons for why someone wants to do a, a VR experience. Um, you know, one of the main things is that they want to generate excitement about what they're doing. They want more booth visits. Um, and the level above that is that if you get more people actually watching your experience and, and immerse in your message, then what that actually ends up doing is it results in more higher quality leads. And we get that feedback from, from people constantly. Um, we've also seen data, we, we've collected data that shows people were able to increase the uh, trade show booth visits by 30% year over year just by using a VR experience as opposed to not. Um, there are a couple other pretty interesting ways for people to actually realize the ROI too. One specific one is that we work with a lot of products companies that have heavy pieces of equipment. Right, so think large pumps or compressors or you know five thousand pound pieces of equipment where they're typically having to pay to ship that in, set it up, and and get a large booth space in order to accommodate all of it. And so then you've got you've got this artificial environment where this compressor is sitting in the middle of a uh, trade show room in in Las Vegas, and wow, instead of doing that and paying the expense of that actually using VR to set up a couple of stools with VR headsets and a 10 by 10 booth, as opposed to having to pay for a 50 by 50 booth and not ship in all that stuff, you can potentially get a bigger bang for your buck by showing this is what that stuff looks like in its actual environment. And here are the value propositions in, we can put pop-ups in there or motion graphics in the experience that really highlight and, and tell the story about that way better than you can just looking at a physical piece of equipment right there. The one thing you're really missing out on for that one is that sometimes people like to physically touch it. So, you know, that's just, that's just one of the things that, that to think about. Yeah, I think when marketing teams look at this, they're just going to have to kind of judge which direction makes more sense because obviously there's an investment in the VR and getting all that uh, content, but maybe that does mean they're not spending as much on the booth itself and shipping heavy stuff there. It just depends on what their actual right. product is and, and how that works. Um, and, and, I, and I actually have had someone approach me that's a farmer and he wants to kind of show how the farm is you know how how they do their work on the farm so they can show off how the products are made, um, yeah. And, and that's kind of one of the ideas that they had, and they're still exploring that. But that's that would be one way to show that uh, at a small ten by ten booth. You actually can take people out on the farm and fly them in a drone or something. I don't know yeah. how that works. Yeah, but it'd be kind of fun. Yeah. Um, so without getting into uh, you know nailing you down to any figures, is what's the the cost range for something like this? When when people say you know I'm interested, um, but there's got to be a cost to it. Where does that start? I'm just curious. So yeah, the cost question is always an interesting one, right? People yep. say you know what does it cost to build a three thousand square foot house? Well, what kind of fit and finish do you actually want? But to give you just kind of some general ranges. Um, Earlier in the conversation, I mentioned the fact that we kind of focused on three different areas. You know, one is a branded experience that's kind of using more stock footage. And, and that's the simplest one that we typically do. And those are usually somewhere in the 7,500 to 12,500 kind of range, just depending on the, the, the length and the amount of content and, and how much customization. Um, and, and those are pretty much the, the simplest ones. Um, the next step up from that is kind of that custom VR uh, linear story. And usually those are somewhere in the 15 to 25 range, typically 15,000 to 25,000, depending on things like how much we're shooting, uh, where we're like to travel, you know, obviously if uh, we're in Atlanta, so if we're traveling across the city here, that's one thing. If we're traveling to uh, Timbuktu, that's another. Um, and then the choose your own adventure ones, and I mean, I guess in general, you can pretty much do anything you want with VR. It's great. You can customize it as much as you want. So it kind of goes the up limit. there. <laughs> Those are typically in the forty to hundred thousand dollar range. Um, really, just kind of depending on you know, we work with big brands like AT and T and Wells Fargo and and Carnival. 
we also work with a lot of groups that um, are industrial products companies that you know aren't necessarily fortune 50 companies that people have heard of and you know what they have important needs too and and it if they can use vr to actually make their product sexier um hey that's a win-win for everybody yeah and when you compare that that cost to the cost of doing trade show marketing you know you got a new booth if you're doing a 20 by 20 30 by 30 i mean you have six figure investments in that and yeah. then depending on the show you go to you're spending you know uh, a lot of money just for the space for the three or four days um and so right. there's there's a there's a pretty people to be there and yeah yeah and there's so there's a pretty deep sunk cost there and so uh it, it you know it's it's all part of the mix it's interesting to hear all that so um you know dave that's pretty much all that i had i mean we talked about how to use vr on a trade show booth lead generation tool what kind of content to have uh potential costs what virtual reality is and <laughs> and that sort of fun thing so uh, anything you want to add uh, let's let people know how to find you first of all Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, please check us out at uh, foundry45.com. Um, we're also on social media. Our, our handle is at foundry45. Um, we have a lot of information on the blog on our website. Um, there's actually a uh, trade show best practices uh, post there that is pretty interesting, I think, for, for the purposes of, of the audience here. Um, again, foundry45.com, just, just click on blog at the top right, and there's a trade show best practices one. Um, that's, that's got some pretty interesting content. And uh, yeah, we love uh, partnering with uh, groups that are actually doing trade shows, and we partner with uh, agencies and, and production houses that work, you know, people like Trade Show Guy, that uh, work with folks to actually deliver stuff. So um, yeah, if we can help, please reach out to us. Dave, it sounds like a, a fun job you have. <laughs> <laughs> very yeah, creative, it's, it's, very creative. So. It's not bad. Yeah. Well, cool. I appreciate your time, um, and uh, we'll, we'll talk again sometime. It's, it's great to hear more and learn more about it and, and share this on the blog. So we'll let you know when this is up. All right. Thanks a lot, Tim. I had a great time. Cheers. Thank you.